Hello everyone. This video is intended to provide you an overview of the new features that have been introduced with the new release of Meerkat, which is 0.8.2 at the time of this video. So if you want to download the latest release, simplest way to do that, open Meerkat. If you don't have a, a bookmark already in your browser where you will be led to the GitHub site where <clears throat> Meerkat is located, click on help, click on the releases, and you will be led to the site to the page where you will find the latest version of, of Meerkat with the different executables for Linux, for Windows, for the Raspberry Pi, or the source code even. So let's switch back to Meerkat and see what's new. A very interesting new feature you will find if you create a an element, an ellipse, a circle, or a rectangle. Before you were always confined to, you click on one point and then you drag and put the element on the screen. You recognize while I do that, that there is a small marker which shows you where the center of this um, element will be located. And if you press the Alt key while still manipulating and still creating the element, you will recognize that while pressing the Alt key, you will generate a, an object that is centered around this very first point where you clicked with the mouse on your scene. This is true for rectangles. It's true for circles. I'm just pressing the Alt key here. It's true for ellipses. Clicking like that will open it from the corner. Pressing the Alt key will generate it from the center. OK, that's one tiny detail, but it helps you to create something which needs to be placed in exactly that point. And especially for circles and for ellipses, it helps you create these. Let's do just one thing, which is the next interesting thing when it comes to editing. I have created here a polyline. I don't do that just for the sake of the example once again. A polyline was so far no longer editable as wasn't a vector shape. If you now click on an element, have selected it, and if you click on the modify bar, then you will have a new entry here, which is called node edit. If you click on this one, you will see that the different points of your polyline, which I had selected, become draggable and changeable. And a small menu, a small toolbar is opening over here where you can add an additional point. You can add a point at the very end of the line where you can change the close status. So the very first and the very last point of your polyline are going to be connected or you can change it even into a complete path which opens up um, some more capabilities to do that okay this is true you can exit it with the right mouse button or if you press escape during the edit it will also switch back to the regular element selection mode same thing is true over here you just need to be mindful that some elements like a rectangle or like a um, ellipse or a, a circle as selected over here are containing a slightly different element and they need to be converted first into another element type before this feature becomes available for them. So if you, for instance, have a look over here, I have selected a, a, a circle, you'll recognize that the node editor element icon is deselected, indicating this is not a non-editable element so far. But let's do one thing. Click on the right mouse button. The context menu is appearing and select convert to path. Selecting it once again and all of a sudden the node editor becomes available again. So what you do recognize over here and I'm just zooming in, you do see that you have once again points being indicated over here that you can just drag and manipulate accordingly. And as you might know from other vector manipulation programs like Inkscape and others, you do have some elements here, some handles, which allow you to change the shape of the curve. So 
there are a couple of uh, commands over here which allow you to manipulate the different things. And I'm just playing around a bit without explaining too many of those. So why don't you use it, play around and get familiar with the tool. Exciting new feature which helps you to manipulate um, things without needing to fall back on a program like Inkscape. Okay, so much for the node editor. There is another interesting new feature that has been introduced with the latest version 0.8.2, which is if you do hover with your mouse button over the tree area where all your operations and your elements are being displayed, you will recognize that there were some tooltips popping up explaining what is this all about, what kind of operation this is. It provides you a bit of an information about the contained element and so, and so forth. And you do have another nice feature. If you, for whatever reason, want to make sure that a, an element is going to be suppressed from the burn operation, then you can do one thing. You can just eliminate here the according reference to the element out of the operation. So this element over here is not contained in any of those operations. So it's not going to be to be burned. We can provide some evidence of that. If you click on simulate, and you recognize that area over here where the element is located is, is empty. Um, that had, has gone unnoticed so far, although this is a nice feature to make sure that you're burning all of, only those elements that you require. Um, Mirkit is from now on warning you about such a fact. Just deselecting here for the purpose of the, of the demo. You do see that here at the operation side, you have warning indicators stating you have unassigned elements that won't be burned. And if you're not sure which one this is, you just right click here on operations and choose select unassigned elements. And then all the elements, or in this case, just the one element that you do have is becoming selected and can be manipulated accordingly, re-entered into an operation or whatsoever. And just do that for the purpose of this session. So it's once again allocated over here. Let's assume you have done all of this stuff and your um, burn has failed and you just want to repeat one thing. You can do one thing. You can just um, delete all the unneeded elements from your design, which is a bit tedious, and you just need to make sure that you're not saving the element, uh, saving the file afterwards. Or you can do one thing. You can disable the relevant operation, which you don't need. Let's assume this operation over here was successful, and you don't want to repeat it or for whatever reasons. There is a, a simple opportunity for that. You can right-click, enable, disable operations, and then it's called disabled, and you do have something over here which is actually been hidden the reason is because i already in a previous effort here i already chose to deselect this element this, this checkbox over here for this operation stating if it's not enabled then it shouldn't be visible either so to eliminate it from the display in the scene which helps sometimes to establish what are the remaining elements that i want to deal with once again Right, context menu, show height contained element. This feature is only available if you're speaking about a disabled operation. Because when it's enabled and hence will be burned, we want to make sure that it remains visible on the screen just to make sure that you are recognizing that these elements are going to be executed. Show height contained elements. And you have a, sl a small um, ghost showing up over here indicating that there are elements contained therein, but they aren't shown and displayed. And since if you click it again, they will become visible again. So a nice feature, which is a bit similar to other programs, features like layers, which you can show and hide. So, um, so much done here for the new functionalities that you have within Meerkat. There's one thing which I'm not going to show you, but which I want to mention. Um, you should give it a try right now if you haven't so far and look at the different options for rastering. 
Um, let me just quickly show you one thing over here. Um, because in the latest release, the rastering has become much smoother. There was a lot of effort that Tetherize put into um, this operation to make sure it runs as smooth and flawlessly as it can. And it has greatly improved in its um, performance. And you is as well here that you have the opportunity to change from unidirectional to bidirectional rastering, which wasn't available so far only if you um, we're using some specific commands to enable this. The reason is because bidirectional is normally the preferred method if you want to execute the raster quickly. So the laser is burning on going hibber and also on the backswing diver. So it uses both the, the fore and the back movement for burning and makes it quite quick. If for whatever reasons you have an um, a material that is not working uh, according to your expectations, you want to make sure that you're always using the operation from one side. So you change the unidirectional setting over here to unidirectional, and hence it will only work on the forward swing. And the backward swing, the laser is being turned off. This is working right now with all the different combinations of your directions from bottom to top from top to bottom, right to left, left to right. And who hasn't recognized this, there is a new feature here, um, not in this version, but it has already been introduced in the previous one, crosshatch, where it will be burned both from left to right, as well from bottom to top. OK, so much for that. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Talk to you soon. See you next time.